Friends, today we have an incredibly special episode. Back in March, we promised you a Q&A on the Cadillac ATSV. Now that's all fine and good, but the reason why this one is special is because I am joined by that car's chief engineer and the chief engineer of Cadillac, friend of the show, Dave Leone. Moto man, it's good to be here. Actually, I'm the one that's got to say it's good to be here because really this is your party. It is, but we're glad to host you. Um, and can I say you have literally rolled out the red carpet, or should I say the black Recaro seats for us to do this with? We have. Yes. Aren't these comfortable? These are great. Yeah. I think I think I need a, uh, like an office swivel of one of these All right. things. All right. Can you make that happen? We might be able to. Okay, we'll All see. Right. Christmas is coming up. Okay. So uh, back in March, you made a couple of promises. Okay. And the viewers, let's just say they were very vocal. Okay. I have some questions for you. So let's go through a couple of questions on ATSV. Some of them decided to take a jump and ask about CTSV. Okay, let's so do it. Let's dive right in uh, and let's go with your, I think your biggest fan. Okay. We already answered a question of his in the preview film. This is Amro from Saudi Arabia. This is a okay. guy that chases Cadillacs around. So I didn't know I had any fans. Uh, believe it or not, you are uh, huge uh, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I don't okay. know if you're aware of this. No? Right. Yeah. Go home and tell your wife that. Yeah, you know? okay. She might actually like you now. What yeah, do you think about that? She might that? suggest I go there. <laughs> um, so Amro asks, uh, he has been following the CT6. Okay. And some of the development and discussion, you talked about a twin turbo V8 mm -hmm. to complement the twin turbo V6 and the V6. Can you chat or provide any insight on that? No, I can't. Uh, at this time, we have nothing to say other than uh, we're working on a powertrain that uh, will be further up market than uh, what we uh, currently have released, but uh, we have no announcements to make at this time. And that is something up market of what you said in the CT6? Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay, so let's uh, press on. We've got some okay. other questions here. So um, Phil Wapner, Phil Wapner, okay. do you think any relation to Judge, Judge Wapner? Wapner? Or, yeah. Ju or Judge Judy, maybe. So. You realize I'm the one that dated myself more than you. Yeah, I think so. And for the avoidance of doubt, you are the one that has been with GM for 37 years. That's right. Okay, That's right. so let's be clear, you are the older one. Uh, Phil Wapner asks that he's, he got very, he started to geek out big time when he heard about the new CTSV. Uh, but his question is, and, and I have the same question, uh, why are you doing the torque converter instead of the DCT? Because it looks like everybody else is doing DCT and you guys are sticking on a torque converter. Sure. Well, uh, first of all, the automatic transmission with a torque converter allows us to provide the smoothness and refinement that you expect from an automatic. Um, and at this level of power, you would need to go to a wet DCT. And a wet DCT, meaning the uh, DCT clutches are immersed in transmission fluid, um, it would actually be heavier by about 10 kilos or 22 pounds heavier. So quite we a bit, to, actually. Uh, quite a bit, if we were able to do a... Uh, wet DCT. Um, and so there, there's no real shift response time advantage. With where we're at with the 8L90, we now have shift times that are in the 100 to 150 millisecond range, which is right in line with the fastest DCTs on the market. So give me an example. So like a E63 or the BMW, what yeah, would they be? Th those would be in the 100 to 150 millisecond range. That's exactly okay. where the 8-speed is. And with the magnesium paddle shifters uh, on the steering wheel, um, there's no re reason to have a DCT. Ours is lighter, shifts just as fast, and um, it uh, gives you refinement that you can't get out of a DCT in terms of the firm bumps and shifts. Mm. Um, we can apply quick shift uh, technology, and we have, um, but you don't get the refinement, so we've chosen not to very consciously. And when you set out, give me an idea of the engineering process. Do you sit out and like put up on a grease board, I want shifts that are this fast, mm -hmm. put, put the number up, yep. and then say we need to hit that, and then say this is the solution we're working for? How do you go it about is. it? It is. Well, we, uh, we set a set of vehicle requirements, and we establish how fast it needs to shift. And then we see what possible solutions would allow you to do that, and we pick the one that's optimal, and that's the one we go execute. In this case, the eight-speed transmission that we have in the new ATSV and CTSV has all that capability, mm -hmm. and uh, it was selected to do the job, and it's doing it just beautifully. Okay. So long and short of the story, that's the strategy for Cadillac stick with the torque converter. It is. Converter. It is. Okay. Uh, let's move on to Landon Kupfer. Landon Kupfer. Um, and this, I picked this question because 
You know, you know me. I'm a little strange with the car choices I, I have. I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like my light, fast cars, but I love cars with power. Mm -hmm. uh, he brings up this whole rumor of a seven liter going into the uh, ATSV, which I love the concept of. Yep. I'll, why don't you answer the question, and then I'll come back to all right, my well, feeling well, on this. Well, first of all, you can't believe everything you see or hear. Yeah. And uh, there's no truth to the rumor that we're putting that in the uh, ATSV. Um, it wouldn't provide the refinement that we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, power difference is uh, not significant in terms of where it's at. Uh, we get 464 horsepower out of the 3.6 liter twin turbo. We get 0 to 60 in uh, 3.8 seconds. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see no need. We made a conscious choice not to put a naturally aspirated V8 into the ATSV and to put the segment appropriate twin turbo V6. And uh, it's delivering the power and the performance. And uh, V8 would also be heavier. And again, it wouldn't be refined. So refinement is important here as we're trying to raise the Cadillac brand. So put aside my thoughts on this for a yeah, minute. Right. Was there, like, for that product, the ATSV, mm -hmm. was there ever a thought process of putting a bigger engine into it than what's in there? We now? thought about putting a V8 in there. And uh, we made a very careful, conscious decision not to. Yeah. Would one fit? Yes. Would it give you a better car? No. Okay. Would it have a higher horsepower rating? Possibly. Mm -hmm. But on balance, um, you know, you, mass is important. When you're trying to create these high performance cars, the weight of the vehicle on the front of the tires is uh, very important. And a V8 would have made it more front nose heavy. Doesn't help the steering response and uh, agility. And uh, we made a decision we're not doing that. And what is, just go back to the ATSV, I know you talked about it in the tech film, what's the balance on that? What's the On the ATSV, it's about uh, 51, so 49. Real close. Real close. Real close. Real close. And this one's what, 53. This one's 52.7. Okay. Um, and 47.3, but this one here has the V8 up front. And so you can see the V8 up front adds a little bit more um, front mass. Now, is there any learning you take from like the Corvette? You know how they put the engine so far back, how Taj does that? Mm -hmm. Was there any learning here where you push the engine farther back? It's as far back as it can go uh, without getting into your feet. <laughs> okay. I know people like me would never brought Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Keep now, your toes warm. I actually want to take a stab at answering this to Landon. Now, I've driven both of these cars now, uh, and this one extensively on the track, this amazing track here. I would argue that as much as I would love the bragging rights of a 7 liter, I think it would be awesome. The one I would buy would be the V6 Twin Turbo. I'm not telling you this because mm -hmm. you're sitting here. Okay. We've talked a lot about balance on, uh, like, we just drove a Boxster GTS, uh, the new Mazda Miata, and you know me with Lotuses. But the between the two, the CTS and that ATSV, the balance is incredible Good. on that ATSV. Glad you see it. So I, that would be at least my answer on this. Okay. Not that I engineered this car no, for No, no, but that's where we landed for those types of reasons. Uh, so let's move to your uh, your biggest fan. I don't know if you're aware of this. You have a huge fan in Saudi Arabia. We okay. already answered one of his questions. How big is preview. he? I don't know how big of a man oh, he is, yeah. but I know that he chases Cadillacs yeah. around town. Good. We like, like he that. stalks them and then sends pictures. We like that. you gotta send. You got to sign up for Twitter. He'll send you. Okay. I swear to God, he'll send you pictures. Okay. Um, anyway, especially with some people like put weird designs on them over there. It's pretty unique mm -hmm. to see. Anyway, he has a very good question in that, uh, and it's on the CTS. Okay. And his question is, he's noticed a lot of side vents on cars nowadays, but on many of them, the side vents are not functional. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know if these are functional. They absolutely are. Really? Um, if you were to pull those off, you'll see that there's an opening in the fender, and uh, we actually extract heat from the motor compartment through that opening in the fender, and it does work. Um, you know, it's very similar to if you ever used a gas can with a little vent cap on top, and oh, when yeah. you open the vent cap, the air flows, or the, the fuel flows faster out the nozzle. Mm -hmm. Well, when you do the same thing here, you get increased air flow elsewhere through the hood extractor and through the fender vents. And so, yes, they are functional. And refresh my memory, is that on the ATSV as well? It's not, it's only on the CTSV. And why, what's the logic in not doing it on ATS versus here? Well, uh, 640 ponies create more heat than uh, 464, <laughs> and uh, we needed a way to get more heat out of the motor compartment. I've always said you're a very pragmatic man. That's right. Mad scientist, no, but that's a very okay. pragmatic yeah. man. We can handle that. You can do it. Yep. 
Uh, let's continue the international theme. Okay. So, you know I used to live in the UK for three years. I, I do. Um, and we have a question from Distress D. Okay. Distress D asks, and this is a great question, you guys want to take these cars more international. Mm -hmm. So, the obvious question is, right hook. Sure. Any um, plans? At this time, we have no plans with the current product to make it right-hand drive. Mm -hmm. um, we are studying it for uh, the next generation. But the products we're introducing here for 2016, uh, there are no right-hand drive so variants. So that means current gen CTS, current gen ATS, but potentially CT6. Potentially. <laughs> potentially. See, you, I've always thought you would be a great character in a mob movie. Oh yeah. And just because yeah, of that look. All right. You got to, you know, when you're going to do right-hand drive, you got to do that from the start. It's not something that oh, you. Oh yeah. You uh, decide later. Oh, this would be a good idea, and uh, let's just add, you know, a steering wheel to the right-hand side of the car. It's far more on, uh, be that fundamental easy. than that. And so, uh, anyways, but we are studying it very seriously for the next generation. Okay, good okay. to know. There you go, Stress D. Uh, and then let's continue with somewhat of a British theme, and I love this uh, screen name. Night Key, I think it's Night Key 007, Night Key W. Okay. I'm a huge Bond yeah. fan, so that's yeah, why I, I like James Bond. And he uh, asks, any ATS or CTS wagons in the future? Not currently. Not currently? Not currently. Um, no, you know, uh, you, when you go ahead and uh, create a body style and you create variants, they have to be good propositions. Mm -hmm. And as good as our last generation wagon was, it was, uh, it was a great car, best looking wagon probably in the business. It was stunning. Um, I but, talked two of my neighbors into buying one. But the volume. With a stick. No, good, good. Well, and we sold three others. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They and, almost got divorced, the yeah. one of them, for getting the car. Okay, all right. Well, we hope not to drive that behavior. But uh, no, I mean, we, you know, we're in this for, uh, as a business to improve the relationship with our stockholders mm. and uh, investing the millions that it takes really to do that. You have to make a profit? I thought we you do. were in business no, to make this is brown not a diesel station yeah, wagon for no, people like no, me. Not anymore. Not anymore. That's and unfortunate. So, um, so anyways, the short story is is that uh, there's insufficient volume there to yeah. make a good business case, and we've opted uh, not to do that at this time. So similar answer on the stick that we talked about in the preview already. Yeah, the, this car is uh, in this segment, in the midsize, high-performance sedan segment. Okay. Uh, automatic transmissions are predominant, and uh, manuals are very, very low, and uh, mm -hmm. the view's not worth the climb. Okay. Uh, let's go to the last question. This comes from Ryan Cox. Ryan okay. Cox. And he has a very good question here. Uh, you and I have spent a lot of time talking about the rear suspension here. Any plans of a, a rear wheel si steer system in these cars? Yeah. And then talk to the CT6. Sure. Uh, ATS and CTS don't need rear steer. Um, you put rear steer in for two reasons. One, to uh, reduce the turning circle mm. for low speeds. And second, to add stability at high speed. Uh, we have adequate performance in both of those cases. Uh, given the size of the cars, the turning circle is quite tight and very responsive. And then uh, high speed stability is uh, outstanding. Um, now, we do know how to do rear steer. Uh, we've already announced that with the uh, new CT6 full size sedan, mm -hmm. we will have uh, rear steer in that car mm -hmm. as an available option. And it's for the reasons I cited earlier, um, but you use it in segment appropriate places, but at the size of these cars, uh, it's not necessary. Now refresh my memory, is there like a tow-in, anything like this on these cars? We have uh, designed in the right deflection steer mm -hmm. so that the car uh, always remains neutral or with some degree of understeer. Mm -hmm. And so there's a deflection steer and ride tow that we, uh, we put into the car by design. Um, but no, we have no active rear steering element mm -hmm. uh, with a motor or a gear. Okay. Okay. Okay, and with that, uh, those are about all the questions we have now. Can I talk you into coming back on the show for potentially another Q&A on the CTS, the once people see this episode, and potentially any new products coming potentially. down Potentially. It depends potentially. on what you have to offer. We, we didn't beat you up that uh, bad. No, right? no, that was fine. Yeah, sure. I, we could have gone 20 minutes just on why you don't have a manual transmission. There you I'm go. I'm going to go home and cry I about know, this. I know. Well, don't cry too hard. Okay. All right? And with that, we are going to say goodbye to Dave, uh, but I'm going to leave you guys with the question. If you guys have questions for Dave about the CTSV or any other upcoming Cadillac product, let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV on one word, Motoman TV on one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
And until next time, Dave and I are going to go find something to do in Wisconsin. Maybe go, let's go buy some brick cheese. Let's do that. How about that? Let's do it. All right. We do it fast. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Take Good care. Man.